The next morning, after preparing breakfast, Charlie rode his scooter to M. Grand Group's office. He parked his scooter on the side of M. Grand's parking lot. As soon as he locked his scooter, a black Bentley slowly parked in a spot across from him. He looked up inadvertently and saw a young couple getting out of the car. The man was wearing a branded suit, looking very handsome and smart. Meanwhile, the lady was dressed up in a flamboyant style. Although somewhat gaudy, she was considered a beauty. As it turned out, the lady was Wendy Wilson, Claire's cousin, and the man was her fiancé, Gerald White. Charlie didn't know why they were here, but he knew that the best way to avoid trouble was to stay away from them. However, the more eager he wanted to hide from them, the higher chances they would see him. Wendy caught sight of him from the corner of her eyes. She yelped loudly, Hey, Charlie. Wendy called out his name in a friendly manner, but Charlie felt goosebumps all over his back. Out of courtesy, he could only stop where he was and wait for them to approach him. He smiled and asked, Wendy, hey, why are you here? Wendy chuckled. Oh, Gerald is here to see Doris Young, vice chairman of Mgrand Group. I'm here to keep him company. Then she turned to look at Gerald with affection and said, the White family has a lot of projects with Mgrand Group. Not only would it help the White family but also our Wilson family in the future. Charlie didn't know that the White family was one of M. Grand Group's business partners. After all, he had just taken over the company and he hadn't had time to get through the details. He didn't show anything unusual on his face. Instead, he simply said with a polite smile, Mr. White is very talented and magnificent, both of you make a great couple. Gerald glared at Charlie contemptuously, feeling a surge of anger within him. This loser had been scolded so badly by Lady Wilson yesterday in front of everybody. How was he able to smile like a clown as if nothing had happened today? Why did Claire, such a stunning and wonderful lady, marry such a loser? If this loser never existed, he would certainly have pursued Claire with great effort. Who would want to be engaged to Wendy, the girl who paled in comparison in every aspect? Gerald huffed a breath in dismay and asked in a pretentious tone, Why are you here? Charlie casually said, I'm here to apply for a job. Apply for a job? Gerald sneered disdainfully. You? The loser who can't do anything wants to apply for a job at Mgrand. Are you kidding me? Charlie frowned. What has it to do with you? The reason why Wendy called Charlie in the first place was to humiliate him. Now that Gerald had started, she immediately mocked, why? Gerald is right, isn't he? In terms of educational background, do you have any diplomas? In terms of skills and abilities, do you have any achievements or results to show them? Trust me, they wouldn't even entertain a loser like you even if you've come to apply for a security job. Know your place, you're better off going to the streets to scavenge for trash, you might earn two or three thousand a month at least. Then, she hurled a water bottle to Charlie's feet and smirked, there you go, pick it up and sell it for money. Don't say that I don't care about you. Gerald laughed sinisterly. You are a piece of trash, but, we're still relatives after all. I'll have your back. It happens that I know the vice chairman of the Mgrand group in person. Why don't I say a few good words on your behalf and see if she can arrange a toilet cleaning job for you? Charlie curled his lips into a cold sneer and said, What kind of job I'm applying for is none of your business, you should mind your own business instead. Mgrand group is a big company, I believe they wouldn't want to collaborate with lowly garbage like you. Gerald's face flushed with anger. Who are you calling garbage? Charlie replied disdainfully, you, garbage. Then, he turned and walked towards the building, ignoring Gerald's indignant screams behind. D asterisk MNU. Stop. Stop right there, do you hear me? Very soon, Gerald strode quickly and caught up with Charlie at the elevator hall. He wanted to teach Charlie a lesson, to give him at least two slaps on his face to let him know the consequences of offending him, but they were inside Mgrand Group's building now. He was worried that the harsh action would tarnish his reputation and infuriate his business partner, so he had no choice but to dismiss the idea. He gritted his teeth and warned, I'll let you go today, but you won't be so lucky next time. Charlie snorted and walked into the elevator. Dot. Before the door closed, he said, Gerald White, do you really think you're so powerful? Trust me, you will soon know the price to pay for being so cocky and arrogant. You little. Gerald's face turned into an ugly shade of red. He wanted to rush into the elevator but Wendy pulled his arms and said, Gerald, don't take the same elevator as that loser, we might suffocate from his stench. He nodded, fully aware that it wasn't wise for him to lay his hands here. Hence, he snorted coldly. Ha! Huh. 
You're lucky today. I'll teach you a lesson next time. Asterisk asterisk in the elevator. Charlie went directly to the top floor where the chairman's office was located. Stephen had already made all the arrangements for him here at M. Grand. The person in charge of the arrangements was a woman named Doris Young. Doris Young had earned her reputation as a renowned businesswoman in Orus Hill. Not only was she a charming lady, but she was also extremely capable. She had been promoted to vice chairman of the M. Grand Group at a young age. She was also among the factors behind the success of the company today. Now that M. Grand Group had been acquired by the Wade family, the former chairman had abdicated and Doris stayed back to assist the new chairman. Doris was quite shocked when she first saw Charlie. She didn't expect to see such a young and charming man when she heard about him from Stephen. She quickly composed herself and greeted him respectfully. Welcome, Mr. Wade. Please follow me to my office. This was also the first time Charlie had ever met Doris. He had to admit that Doris was a very stunning and alluring young lady. She was about 27 or 8 years of age with a slender yet plump body figure, captivating appearance, and a very mature and honorable manner. Sitting down in front of Doris's desk, Charlie started, I will not come into the office often, so I would like you to continue looking over the company on my behalf. In addition, please do not disclose my identity to the public. Doris was aware that Mr. Wade, who was sitting in front of her now, came from the extraordinary Wade family. For a prominent family like theirs, Emgrand Group was nothing but a mediocre business, so it was normal for him not to manage it himself. Hence, she quickly said, Sure, Mr. Wade, just tell me if you need anything, I'll be at your service. At this moment, a secretary knocked on the door and said, Miss Young, a man called Gerald White and his fiancée are here to see you. Doris said instantly, I'm seeing a VIP now, let them wait. Charlie asked, Do you know Gerald White? Mr. White's family is one of our partners and several of their major projects are linked to our company. They have said that they will be here to see me, they have been here several times too. Charlie uttered in a cold voice, from now on, Emgrand Group would no longer have any business dealings with the White family. Halt all ongoing and preparatory projects. If the White family still earns a dime from our company, I don't need you as our vice chairman. Doris startled in shock for a while figuring that someone from the White family must have offended the man. So, she nodded vigorously and exclaimed, Mr. Wade, don't worry. I'll now order my staff to stop all collaboration with the White family. Charlie nodded satisfyingly and said, Tell them that Emgrand Group has no interest in collaborating with lowly garbage, then ask the guards to kick them out. Asterisk outside the office, Gerald and Wendy were waiting anxiously. The White family had always wanted to be the key players in the collaboration with Emgrand Group, so he hoped that he could build a good relationship with Doris Young and thus bring the family closer to the connection. However, the least expected thing happened. Doris's secretary approached them with several guards. Gerald asked in confusion, Hi, may I know if Miss Young is available to see us now? The secretary glared coldly at him and said, Sorry. Our vice chairman said that Emgrand Group has no interest in collaborating with lowly garbage like you. From now on, we will cancel all the projects with your family. What did you say? Gerald gaped in extreme shock and his jaw almost dropped to the floor. Why did he find the remark so familiar anyway? Oh, right. Charlie Wade said the exact same thing when they were in the parking lot. What did Doris Young mean by that? Did she really intend to halt all the collaboration with the White family? Gerald felt a surge of blood flooding her head, exploding inside. What happened? Cancelled all projects? A large portion of the White family's profits came from working with Emgrand. If Emgrand Group terminated their ties, didn't it mean that the family's net worth would be cut by half? No, he couldn't accept such a cruel fact. He growled loudly, I want to see Miss Young. I want to ask her in person. The secretary simply glared at him coldly. I'm sorry. Miss Young will not see you and you're not allowed here in the future. Gerald shouted in great dismay, are you freaking kidding me? We are a long-term business partner of Emgrand, it isn't up to her to terminate our projects just like that. Don't mess with us. The secretary ignored his screaming and directed the security guards around her, kick them out. The head of the security team immediately jumped on them. 
He grabbed Gerald's wrist and twisted it hard behind him. Gerald yelped in pain and Captain Cooper snorted coldly. Hurry and get out of here. If you dare make a scene at Emgrand Group, I'll break you in half. You're just a security guard. How dare you raise your voice at me? Do you know who I am? Captain Cooper gave him a slap across his face instantly and shouted. What are you in the face of Emgrand Group? Gerald felt his face burning from the slap. He was about to burst in fury when his phone suddenly rang. It was his father. When he answered the call, a furious roar echoed from the other end of the line. You be asterisk starred. What did you do? Emgrand Group wants to terminate all projects with us. Who on earth did you offend? Gerald whined sorrowfully. No, Dad, that's not true. I didn't offend anyone. I just came here to see Miss Young, but I haven't even seen her face yet. Gerald's father shouted again. The people at Emgrand Group said that they've terminated their collaboration with us because of you, the lowly garbage. It's all because of you that our family is suffering a great loss. Hurry and come back. Explain this to your grandfather yourself. Grabbing the phone in a daze, Gerald and Wendy were forcefully escorted out of Emgrand Group's main entrance. Suddenly, Charlie's face appeared in his mind. He turned to Wendy abruptly and asked, Wendy, is it because of your loser cousin-in-law? Does he have anything to do with Emgrand Group? Huh? Wendy was obviously taken aback by Gerald's remark. When she pondered the circumstances, it might indeed have something to do with the loser, but he was a loser. Thus, she shook her head and uttered firmly, No, it is absolutely impossible that he has anything to do with Emgrand Group. He is not even qualified to clean their toilets. You're right. Gerald nodded numbly. He hung his head low when he thought about his angry father. I have to return home right away. Very soon, the news of the White family being kicked out by Emgrand Group spread throughout Orus Hill like wildfire. No one knew of the reason, but they were certain that the White family must have offended Emgrand Group in some way. At this rate, the White family was considered gone. Their net worth had been cut short by more than half. They were originally close to the peak of the social ladder in the city, but after the incident, they instantly dropped down several levels and became a second-rate family in terms of social class. Lady Wilson was shaking with anger when she heard the news. She wanted to call off Wendy's engagement with Gerald, but even after the termination, the White family was still more prominent than the Wilson family and she couldn't afford to lose the ties, so she could only bear with it for the moment. Asterisk meanwhile, in Doris's office, Charlie looked impressed and satisfied after he heard about the process. He highly appreciated her rapid and stern attitude in it. He said with a satisfied smile, Doris, great job, you did well. Starting today, your salary will be doubled. Doris gaped in astonishment. She stood up and bowed respectfully. Thank you, Mr. Wade. Charlie nodded and continued, also, I want you to make two announcements. Yes, please proceed. The first thing is to announce the change of Emgrand Group's ownership and nomination of the new chairman, but don't disclose my identity. Just say that he is one Mr. Wade. The second thing is the announcement of Emgrand Group investing $2 billion to build a six-star hotel in Orus Hill, and announcing the tender bidding for partners. Construction and interior decorating companies throughout the city are welcome to bid. The main business of Wilson Group was interior design and construction. The old lady would dream of hopping on Emgrand's cruise. Whoever could win the bidding with Emgrand Group would surely become the most sought-after person in the company. Now that he owned Emgrand Group, he should offer his wife some sweet deals.